All right. The story of how I started my system integrator, take zero. All right, so as some of you might know, we're doing this integrator growth program starting in October. Uh, we have accepted 21 integrators into the program. There are nine more that we're reviewing. We'll have 30 integrators. There are nine more spots and we have, we're reviewing integrators. We've rejected 36 so far. We are basically looking to help integrators build their industry for integrator, right? So the, the, the integrator growth program is all about helping integrators scale. Why? Because if our mission is to help save and create middle-class jobs in the United States, there needs to be more industry for integrators to support that effort. We're at a point right now where throughout the entire course of uh, Intellic integration until I sold the company to the employees last year. So from 2018, which is when I did my reorg, until 2024, we accepted one in 12 opportunities. So for every one project we accepted, there were 11 we had to say no to, right? So that is an upside down model from what most, most integrators are hand to mouth. It's either feast or famine. They either have more work than they can handle or they don't have enough work to keep the lights on. And um, we discovered the reason we don't have enough industry four integrators is they don't know how to run the companies. They, they don't know how to be an industry four integrator. So the integrator growth program is all about that. Where does it come from? It comes from this original story, okay? Uh, which I'm gonna tell here in just a second. So starting next month in October, today's September 25th, I think it's October 27th or, you know, it's the end of the month. We're doing the first of the first four workshops. So we're doing foundation, business development, operations, and finance, four four-hour workshops that start next month. And then starting in February of 2026, we start the cohort meetings where each of the integrators we've broken into groups of 10 and they'll go to a cohort meeting each month for 12 months while we help the businesses scale. And then every other month, each integrator is gonna meet with me privately one-on-one -on -one, and we'll, we'll address private, confidential, intellectual property stuff that they, want, that they want to work on. All right, but where did this entire idea come from? Well, it came from integrators asking us we would do it, obviously, uh, because it's a massive amount of work, a massive, amount of, massive undertaking. But I wanna tell the story of this. So this, what this photo is, is this is my, our first ICC when I started Intellic in, Feb, in February of 2015. And this is a copy of the very first check I ever got from my very first client. So the check was for $29,323. This photo of my team and I, or me and my team at ICC, and this check remind me where we came from, right? So ICC was about six months after I started the company and I had whatever, eight, nine people here. And that check reminds me of when the dream of running a industry four integrator turned in to reality. And so I'm gonna tell the story here. There's a lot of integrators that reach out to me and they're asking about how they can scale their business, et cetera. It's not just integrators, consultants. I'm having trouble finding clients or I'm having trouble execute or I'm having trouble, I, I know what it is, I, uh, what kind of projects I want to be working on, but I'm having trouble finding them, okay? The three questions that I ask every single consultant and integrator is this, what problem do you solve, okay? How do you get in front of the people who need that, who have that problem? And then how do you execute? Once you convince them that you're the one who can solve it, how do you execute? I mean, it's really simple, it's those three. There are many people who have started consultancy businesses who have no, who, no business being a consultant. You're not an expert enough. You don't have enough experience. You're not, you're not the expert in the field. You're not the domain expert. You know, you should go work for somebody else and become an expert first, okay? That happens a lot. Obviously, IGP is not for those people, okay? IGP is for the people who are an expert in something. They can quantify what they're an expert in, but they don't know how to get in front of the people who have that problem. Once they're in front of them, they don't know how to make the case for why they should work with them. And then once they are awarded the project, they don't know how to execute in a timely fashion. And you know, and then they don't know how to run the mechanics of the business. From day one, I had a vision of how uh, Intellic integration would operate. In the previous summer, when I was the manager of Texas operations for a, a very, very famous integrator, one of the largest integrators in the world, I ran the entire Texas operations. I opened the office, I hired the staff, I had experience in running an integrator for someone else. And the previous summer, I sat down with my wife in the front lawn of our house and I said, you know, my bosses just don't get it. 
Like there's a better way to do this. And I've taught, I've told lots of the stories on how I realized I didn't get it. And I said to her, I think I can do this better. And I think I can serve my mission better by going into business for myself as an integrator. I had owned companies before I started Intellic Integration, but I never ran one, any of my own companies. I was an owner, either I was an investor or I was a silent partner in many businesses, but I never actually ran my own company until Intellic Integration. And there was growing pains. I had to spend, you know, there was three years of, of growth and then we plateaued in 2018 and I realized I couldn't go to the next level with the team I had. So in 2018, I basically did a complete reorg, you know, cut 70% of the staff, went back to the core group and then rebuilt over 90 days. And me and the one other engineer left, who we had 6,000 hours of engineering that needed to be done and there was two of us doing it. You know, I, I made the strategic decision to do that, right? The same approach I used for this very first check of $29,323, which by the way, was only me. I was the only engineer billing for this first check. All the way through when we received a wire for $1.1 million from another client. The methodology and the approach was the same, okay? And the approach was focused on only working on the projects we were experts in, um, solving problems specifically, not focused on you know, making sure that the statement of work which is our syllabus, the statement of work matches the problem. What we said the solution is in the statement of the work is going to solve the problem the client actually told us they had. And we were always solving a problem they had, they knew they had, and a problem they didn't know they had so that we could demonstrate our expertise. That same methodology from here is the methodology I used in 2024 right before we sold the company. And I keep this check behind my desk back here to remind myself where we came from, just like that ladder over there in the corner. That ladder is to remind me where I came from in my childhood, okay? I've told that story before in previous videos. But in business, this check reminds me where we came from, from nothing. Zero dollars, I had $20,000 in the bank, and within 30 days, I had the first check for 29,000. Within 60 days, we were in an office in Irving. Within 90 days, everybody was W-2. Within six months, we were bringing nine people to ICC. Within nine months, we sold our first million dollars. In fact, at our Christmas party, at a Dallas Cowboys, Temp Tampa Bay Buccaneers football game, December 16th or whatever that year, we had just closed on a million dollars in sales for the year. And I keep that check and that photo behind my desk here to remind me exactly where it is we came from. So for those of you who have asked, you wanted to hear the origin story, why, why this check back there? As you guys can see it sitting up there in that shelf. Why is that back there? And why are we doing IGP? That's it. So. Anyway, hopefully that helps. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one.